This is the average keyboard that most of you probably use to work from home. Probably came with your computer for free. Listen to how this sounds. That's not very satisfying, working eight hours a day on this thing. Forget about it. Now, let me tell you about this keyboard. If you're looking for a keyboard that you could just purchase and it sounds really nice, well then maybe stick around for the rest of this video. Howdy hey, my name's Hippio Tech. I've got these two keyboards from iQnix. They're full-sized keyboards, which means you don't have to give up your numpad. That's pretty cool, right? But let's get into the nitty gritty. Are these keyboards worth it if you work from home? Are these keyboards worth it at all? Well, who knows? Stick around, find out. These are normally 245, however they are on sale right now. I think you can save 30 bucks. It comes in a couple different designs. I have the Hitchhiker, which is like Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. It's like a moon themed one. And Variable X, is this based on like some type of mech or something? I don't know. Let's check out the purple one first. Here's a nice slow peel for you to jazz music. Oh, that is not satisfying at all. Oh no. Sheesh. We've got a little manual. Fluid invasion. Fluid, the fluid is invading. Please be careful not to allow water or other liquids to enter. Do not let the fluids invade. Comes with a free sticker. So that's kind of cool. Um, bye. It also comes with a cable, just a normal USB-C cable. It also comes with Oh, oh, a quite premium switch puller, actually. I'm gonna have to test this out, but that feels really nice. It also comes with keycap puller, lame. And ooh, here's where it gets really interesting. This, some of you might be being like, Hippio, why are you holding a random box? Well, actually it is the wireless dongle for 2.4 gigahertz. It's not Bluetooth, but it can be Bluetooth, I think he says. Wait, is this what I think it is? Is this what I think? <gasps> Um, so anyways, it also comes with a couple spare keycaps if you're a Mac user. So we've got the iQnix board. This looks incredibly pretty. So this is the iQnix F97 variable wireless keyboard. It's got an aluminum or aluminum chassis, which is pretty poggers. They appear to be cherry profile keycaps, but I'm not entirely sure. It looks like there's, there's an interesting little badge. Other fun facts about this board is it does have a USB-C port. And then as you'll notice with the bottom, you see F97 in like a very hard to read font that's kind of just etched on there. A little bump. I don't know why there's a bump here, probably for the battery. And then these feet, which are very classy looking, but also kind of impractical. It's not adjustable. The overall keyboard design is very pretty compared to something like a Razer or Corsair. This is a way more unique design, it's not just basic RGB gamer cutouts. Oh, let's take a look at the numpad. For those of you that do accounting, you'll probably want one of these. Also, I'm sorry that you do accounting. This is gonna be one of the biggest features as a lot of custom keyboards nowadays just get rid of the numpad. They say, screw you, you don't need a numpad because the amount of times that I hear, Hippio, I want a custom keyboard, but it doesn't have numpad. I am sad. Here you go. Here's an option. Now, the stabilizers are probably CoStar. I'm just telling you right now, I'm sensing it through the board. They're CoStar, unfortunately. If you pop off a keycap, it reveals these switches. These ship with TTC or Cherry switches. If you're buying this at home, don't buy the Cherry switches. The TTC switches come more factory lubed. They're just better stock. Also, fun fact about this board, it is hot swap, meaning that you can take the switches out and you don't have to desolder. One thing about this board that is a pro and a con, and I'm gonna have to talk about it. I've been waiting this whole time. I'm gonna talk about the stabilizers and let me show you them. So this is a CoStar stabilizer. They're on a little wire. They sound pretty amazing from the factory usually, but they make taking off switches really annoying. Um, and then they're a nightmare to mod afterwards. So if you're never gonna touch this keyboard, great. If you want to touch this keyboard by modding it, I mean, not like in a weird way, not so great. Ah, they made it look so easy. They're like, Hippio, putting on CoStar stabilizers is easy. Please just go on, please. Ah. Oh, uh, I can't do it. All right, we've got one end on, one end on. Oh. Okay, yeah, it's about infinitely easier if you just take the uh, keycaps off around it. Guys, I don't understand why anybody ever has problems with CoStar stabilizers. I think anybody that has problems with them really is just not as smart as I am, frankly, so. So let me real quick go ahead and unbox the other one and then we'll get into acoustics. That way I can compare the two. This is the Space Edition. Please leave a like if you're watching from space. That would be pretty cool of you. So first thing, 
you'll notice is that this keyboard is aesthetically different. So you've got a center printed font, which I think is very clean in this case. You've also got a lot of novelties and such. This also seems to be a flatter profile than the other set. So with this keyboard, you will get a different typing feel and potentially different sound just with the moon version. Some people might find this easier to type on, some people might not. Really the only way is to try it out yourself. Something worth noting is that these are two different colors of chassis. They both give off different vibes. Next to each other, the moon version actually is way more pleasing to the eye as the greenish beige in the other one is a little bit vomity. I, I don't dare say. Oh. Okay. So just based off that, I could tell you this one sounds better. I like this one substantially more. This one is deeper. It makes more thockiness. These are die sub PBT keycaps. I think the space theme is very aesthetically pleasing. Space aesthetically pleasing. I think the printing on these is really nice, actually. This is similar quality to a full set that you might spend 70, 80 bucks on. So this is a typing test of the stock moon board. That sounds really nice for a stock keyboard. Sounds a little bit hollow, but I think we can get this thing sounding amazing just for a couple bucks. And this thing will sound God tier. All right, let's check out the other one. Yeah, I think this one sounds less pingy. This one sounds more Talky. Now let's do a couple modifications to make them sound even better. So you might be thinking, Hippio, I bought this keyboard because I don't want to do any mods. I just want a keyboard that sounds good and feels good stock. But listen, just a couple dollars, just 30 minutes of your time. You ever built a Lego set? It's really fun. Bear with me, stick with me on this one, and I'll explain it in a way that makes sense to you, okay? All right, now we're gonna undo these four screws on the side on each side i am winging this completely so you know how i said trust me stick with me on this one maybe don't trust me yet long term oh oh what the um <laughs> chat chat oh that thing is holding on by a thread so this is a grounding wire right here i don't want to rip the grounding wire off so i'm going to flip this over Oh, well, I accidentally ripped the grounding wire off, so now she <laughs> Woo! There's already a ton of foam in here. Looking at this, there's not much I could actually do. They filled every waking space of this keyboard with foam. However, it still sounds a little bit hollow. We're not going to be able to foam mod this thing, but I can at least tape mod it. So I'm taking off some of these switches in specific areas to access the screws. Then uh, I'm going to do that now. So magic. Look at that magic. So all the keycaps are off now. It's just time to unscrew this. I'm assuming this is how you get the board open. I don't actually know for sure. <gasps> it's lifting. It's lifting. Oh, okay. That's menacing. There's already actually some bumpers here that are going to reduce a lot of your vibrations. If you are a veteran of the Hippiotech channel, you know that we need to use some tape. So why am I putting tape on a keyboard, you might ask? Well, I've got a full video on it that I'll put in the top right, but essentially it makes the keyboard sound a little bit deeper. We've got two layers of tape on the bottom of this board. I put a little bit of tape on the bottom case as well. The reasoning for this is that I don't want the metal to reverb. I did dodge the battery as I don't want to create a fire hazard as this tape is a little bit conductive. I question whether or not this will seal actually but i'm just gonna cut out around these little screw hole bits okay that fits together how it's supposed to i'm pretty sure now we'll screw everything back together and we'll be good to go okay Ooh, i'm already excited for how this is gonna sound this thing is not very strong oh my gosh i just ripped the whole everything off oh no wait did that actually break it hold on oh no okay these screws were undone but this is held together very flimsily. This is fine. Everything is fine. This is like an Ikea drawer. Holy. This is a pretty rough assembly. So general vibes. This keyboard was not as easy to put together as I originally thought. Just 30 minutes okay. of your time. You ever built a Lego set? Hippio big, strong. Hippio fix with literally manhandle. I've never been more confident about this fitting together probably maybe. 
Oh yeah, this is perfect. This is a entirely perfect build. Nothing about it is scuffed whatsoever. Nope. The edges are bothering me. Don't worry, when you're using it, you don't even see it. Oh gosh. Unless it interferes with hitting the control button. It's so functional. Guys, the control button is perfectly functional. At the end of the day, it's about the friends you made, not the keyboards that work. Oh, see, see, we're fine. The problem is no matter how much I hate modding iQnix boards, I still like them. Let's try wireless. So this has the, the wireless dongle and I'm gonna plug it in. Now, remember that thing that I thought was for grounding it? That might've been the antenna. Um, who knew that if you mess up the antenna, it doesn't work. It has RGB? What? I didn't see an LED. Yo, that's actually so cool. It had RGB the whole time. The RGB is incredibly crisp. That's a fun bonus fact for this board. RGB, Epic Gamer Keyboard. Wow, wow sound, yay. Let's give it a little sound test and then I think we're good to go. I gotta be honest, like, I think I liked it better without the tape. I think my general verdict for these boards is if you're looking for a keyboard that's full-sized and you wanna do absolutely nothing to it and have it be good enough, this is the board for you. What are you doing? Go out and buy it, use code HIPPIO, save 5%. There you go. Now, are you looking for a keyboard that's good to mod? Good for enthusiasts? It will get you into the hobby? This ain't it, chief. This is not a good keyboard to mod. You will mess something up in it if you try and mod it. I can't do it. <laughs> Highly unrecommended to mod. Hippio not modding seal of approval. So since making this video, the Keychron Q5 was announced. Now the Keychron Q5 is cheaper uh, and better in almost every way. However, it doesn't look as pretty as some of these boards. But I haven't made a video on that yet, so I can't quite say exactly what's going on there. So if you'd like to see a video on the Keychron Q5, hit subscribe. As 78% of you haven't, that's pretty cringe. It's free. You can hit subscribe right now. Check down. It might have unsubscribed you. Um, If you just subscribed, you get a bonus howdy hey. Howdy hey. Thank you so much. So I'll leave a link to the Keychron Q5 down below and then get subscribed for a video on it.